Chair Shot Reality, we are back. We hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday if you're celebrating here in the States. Juicy Steen over there on Twitter. You can follow him, and he's wearing, true story, wearing a Goldberg shirt. I had to turn that shirt inside out. Screw you, Calvert Middle School in Calvert County, because <laughs> I showed too much skin uh, on my T-shirt. Uh, I, I was just trying to imitate that I had that kind of a physique. Uh -huh. Justin LeVar here with you. TLC predictions. I'm stoked. SmackDown TLC predictions. Is awesome. We're talking TLC. We already did our first part uh, talking the gold with Brock Lesnar. Uh, I encourage you to go back and watch it. It is uh, full of hilarity. But back here in the University Center studio, TLC, WrestleRumble.com, win some money for your predictions. Juice, let's get into it. Let's, uh, uh, let's start off with a grudge match. Nikki Bella up against Carmella. No DQ. I'm, I'm excited for it. Even though it's just a grudge match, there's nothing really truly on the line. No number one contendership. But, I mean, I... I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of excited for it. I think it's kind of underrated. I think that might be a... Somebody call Vince Russo and make a John Cena on a poll. Carmella Ooh. is non-stop. Carmella is non-stop talking about John Cena. Well, maybe. <laughs> this, I mean... Is he going to show up? Isn't she, isn't, isn't she dating the uh, big cast? Yeah, well, I mean, he's on, the, he's on another brand. You got to do something else while you're filling on time with SmackDown. Needs a little Tuesday, she needs a little Tuesday night loving, apparently. Oh uh, grudge match, I mean, who are you picking here? I'm going to go with uh, Nikki Bella. I'm gonna go Carmella. I don't see any point. Uh, I think this would be. I mean, Nikki Bella, veteran. Let Carmella win. You know what right. I mean? I don't know. I, I we'll see what happens. Well, we will see what happens. Uh, moving on, another kind of grudge match. Kalisto up against Baron Corbin. A chairs match. Seems like this has been going on this feud for a while. I dig what Baron Corbin's been doing. He's been just going out and just <laughs> ruining every possible thing for the cruiserweights. Kalisto, the brand, and he doesn't care about it. Anybody else other than himself. And I think with a chairs match, it gives Kalisto a little bit of a chance. I think it's like a Rey Mysterio, Kevin Nash type type thing. And I think Kalista might end up winning. Because you remember, well, actually, Juice Senior, your father remembers it much better, TNA much better. Did Kevin Nash at one point do something with the X Division like yes, this? Yes, he did. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the first thing You're I thought right. about. You should probably ask him. Juice Senior? Yeah, my dad. Or, yeah. Oh, or Kevin Nash. Or Ke either, either one. Way. Either one, you're going to answer. I'd rather talk to Juice Senior. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Kevin. All right, uh, <laughs> who are you picking? I said Kalista. I think Kalista Ooh. takes it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go Corbin. I don't think you can derail Baron. I mean, I, I, I'm a fan of Kalisto, fellow David Allen Ware, but so I'm going Baron Corbin. So let's Corbin. say Baron Corbin, is there something ex, ne extra for him? Is there, what's, what's next? A title? I, I, don't know if, I don't know if there's a title. I mean, because you know, the, I mean, the IC title, which we'll get to, depending on who has that. Uh, I don't know. I think Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin's on the same path that Braun Strowman is over on Raw. Okay. And then you almost wonder if Sami Zayn, is he coming to SmackDown with the way that's acting? That's true. And, and truth, guys, look, if you're a Sami Zayn fan, if, if Sami Zayn goes from Raw to SmackDown, he's just going to get beat up by a Baron Corbin. So that's, it's, it's, that's just a substitute. So you, you don't know what's next for him, though? You just think I he don't. wins this match? And well, because here's what's tough. You have TLC. What's next for SmackDown? Royal Rumble. Yeah. And that's, it's that open end of time of the year where they got a lot of programming to fill. It's the holidays, so they, then they get kind of, I don't want to say lazy, but I'm gonna ta say get he, tape shows. I'm going to say he has a match against James Ellsworth. I'm going to say he has a match against Santa Claus. Because they, they always, they always around the, the Christmas time, they always end up having, okay. he's the perfect guy he to destroy to the Santa. Everything. And then Mick Foley comes over from Raw. How dare you disrespect the Santa There's Claus. There's a lot of stuff that can be done between now and Royal Rumble. I'm pretty excited. Book it right now. Baron Corbin taking on Santa <laughs> Claus. Uh, that is going to happen. It, 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 it has to. All right. Uh, Heath Slater, Rhino, tag team champions, up against, I still can't believe it, Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. I thought for sure by the time we got back from break that this would be done with. I don't know. I, I, is this the time that Bray Wyatt gets his first championship? Is it? No. It, it, no. No. And Okay. No. Now, do you think Randy Orton, is this the time where they split off and it begins something? I think, or do you think it has a longer purpose? You I know, I keep, I keep thinking it's going to end, but it keeps extending. I, I still believe that Randy Orton, this is all one big swerve, that Randy Orton is going to tear down the Wyatt family from the inside. We're already seeing you know, some subtle hints that the, the Luke Harper's feeling like the third wheel. He's losing, he lost to Kane. He tried to redeem himself in the main event of SmackDown by helping out Orton and, 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 and Wyatt. I, just, I still don't believe that Randy Orton is actually 100% committed. I think it, this has all just been one big plot by the, the sadistic Viper. And, uh, but what's his end goal? So he tries to get in here. Does he want to win the tag titles? Does he want to... Like, no, he wants to destroy them. I, I, think, I, think, I, I, okay. I truly think that... Think about it. This is the one match on the show, I believe. I think it's the only... I think it's the only match on the show that's not a gimmick match. Yeah. That doesn't have a gimmick attached to it. So, but it's very interesting in general. But you, what I'm saying is this could be you know, your third match of the night. Um, and it could simply be you know, Bray Wyatt starts the match. Boom, 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 boom. And then he goes to get and he goes to tag Randy Orton. And Randy Orton just completely... See, ma what, maybe Orton drops off the apron. I don't know. I, just, I think they've got a lot of momentum right now. I like Randy Orton's promos as, as part of the Wyatt family. He's already he's got that weird mental thing going. Yeah. I think they actually take the titles here. Uh, Slater and Rhino have been a great story, but I think it's just just pass it off to, to these guys, and, and I think the dissension between those two will have them lose the belts at some point, and then Orton will just. Well, did you see the? I mean, these change, but did you, did you see the advertisements later in the month of December? I think the house show they're doing at MSG actually has 
uh, a f I think it's a four-way match. It's um, Kane versus Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton versus Luke Harper. Hmm. Now, again, that could change, but you know, that's only a couple weeks away, so why would they book something that, that, that's that bold? That's true. Advertise something, that, which would make me believe that. We'll have to see what happens. Yeah. All right, let's go to Josh Eisenberg for his TLC predictions. Josh can help you win money on WrestleRumble.com. Josh, take it away. Thank you guys. Dallas, Texas hosts WWE TLC as you guys were talking about. And I'm going to break down all of my predictions for this Sunday at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Let's start it off with two of the women's matches. You have Carmella and Nikki Bella in a no disqualification match. I'm going to go with Nikki Bella winning. You've seen Carmella time and time and time again continuously get the upper hand on Nikki Bella, but I think this no disqualification match is perfect. Carmella is not the most polished in the ring, but Nikki Bella can go outside and show more physicality, more aggression, and more intensity. Pick up the W for Nikki Bella. The SmackDown Women's Champion is one that I've been going back and forth with. You have the established last kicker of Becky Lynch. You have Alexa Bliss. Who do you pick? Alexa Bliss. I'm going to go with Alexa Bliss. I think she's going to win and become the SmackDown Women's Champion. It's a tables match, guys. Reminds you that she doesn't have to pin the champion. She doesn't have to make the champion submit. So I can see somewhat of an oops. I put her through a table uh, ending of this match, similar to what Big Show and Cody Rhodes did a handful of years ago, and similar to what Sheamus did with John Cena at TLC to become the WWE Champion six years ago. Those are the women's matches. A chairs match. Kalisa versus Baron Corbin. Grab me a pillow and grab me a drink because that's all I care about whenever this match is on TV. But I'm going to go ahead and say Baron Corbin picks up the victory. A chairs match, basically saying we have a chair, we can hit them over the head, we can hit them in the back. Baron Corbin needs to show aggression. Baron Corbin needs to show Daniel Bryan that he doesn't want to be on SmackDown. Make the trade, Raw and SmackDown, Sammy to SmackDown, Baron to Raw. It's going to make a million times better for both of their careers. Moving on, the new Wyatt family. Bray Wyatt and uh, Randy Orton always looks good with that pose. I'm going to go with the new Wyatt family picking up the win. There's a reason why they didn't want American Alpha in this match. There's a reason why Wyatt and Orton weren't originally in that tag team turmoil match a few weeks ago. I think you have to go with Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt finally, finally capturing his first championship in WWE. It's like a stake it out back. That's well overdue. All right, we're going to go on to the Intercontinental Championship ladder match. The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler, which is this being billed as the last encounter between Dolph Ziggler and The Miz. Well, The Miz won the championship on SmackDown Live 900th episode. Why would he drop it three weeks later? Wouldn't make any sense. Go with The Miz. Stick with The Miz. I do think Dolph Ziggler goes on to bigger and potentially better things. But we all know, guys, the Royal Rumbles in January is going to be fast-tracked for a lot of these guys. There's not going to be many storylines. They're all going to get bunched into the Royal Rumble match. So that might ultimately be where Dolph Ziggler ends up. And then you have the main event, the WWE World Championship match between AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose. Tables, ladders, and chairs, oh my. Do you remember that tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs match? Probably not because it was brutal. But with the move that James Ellsworth took off those steel steps, I expect Ellsworth to be a big part of this. I don't want him to be, but it's going to happen, guys. Is it time for James Ellsworth to turn heel and align himself with AJ Styles? Yes. Yes, it's going to happen. Ellsworth getting that contract, securing that contract, doing everything right is now the right time for him to be doing everything wrong. AJ Styles is not dropping the title. A big, big match is going to happen at the Royal Rumble for AJ Styles. And guys, the Royal Rumble's in San Antonio. TLC's in Dallas. I can think of two, maybe three legends from Dallas that are potentially going to be there. At Josh Eisenberg 4 on Twitter, Chair Shot Reality all weekend long. More predictions coming up. Also, my NXT at 90, and I'm live in studio with Justin to round out the week.